Um, thanks, Marie. So first I want to introduce Daisy, who is working on the team to create the tools, inspiration and support for cultivating local community, which is core to our work. And during this time of Trump, it's even more core. Uh, we've been talking about this since we launched the Local Peace Economy Project, that you know, community is how we, we move through and everything, uh, especially as the structures are crumbling down around us. And you know what we've learned in the process is we've been unlearned even from what community is, how to start it, how to find it, and how to be uh, a community member. So we're just gonna begin the process today, but first Daisy's going to uh, ground us as we always do in our tradition and read us a poem. So I'll turn it over to Daisy. Hey, uh, it's Daisy here. What's up? Um, you'll get to learn a little bit more about me later on, um, but super happy to be here with you guys to ground us today. Um, as usual, um, when it comes to grounding, I really, really love to just eat on the floor. Um, I invite you to do the same if that feels comfortable to you. Um, maybe if uh, you are slouching a little bit, it maybe get that back straight a little bit, you know, um, just trying to cultivate a little bit of presence here um, as we move into some of today's content and especially this poem, um, which I think really resonates with what we're gonna be talking about around building community and what it means to be in community and find community. Um, and so uh, this is a beautiful poem called Perhaps the World Ends Here um, by Joy Harjo. Um, if you're familiar, there you go. Um, the world begins at a kitchen table. No matter what, we must eat to live. The gifts of earth are brought and prepared, set on the table. So it has been since creation and it will go on. We chase chickens or dogs away from it, baby's teeth at the corners. They scrape their knees under it. It is here that children are given instructions on what it means to be human. We make men at it, we make women. At this table we gossip, recall enemies and the ghosts of lovers. Our dreams drink coffee with us as they put their arms around our children. They laugh with us at our poor falling down selves and we put ourselves back together once again at the table. This table has been a house in the rain, an umbrella in the sun. Wars have begun and ended at this table. It is a place to hide in the shadow of terror a place to celebrate the terrible victory. We have given birth on this table and have prepared our parents for burial here. At this table, we sing with joy, with sorrow. We pray of suffering and remorse. We give thanks. Perhaps the world will end at the kitchen table while we are laughing and crying, eating of the last sweet bite. Yum. Thank you, Daisy. And thank you for so beautifully offering it to us. Um, you know, just a reminder that we are in community right now. This is, this is a community that we've been building for the last few months. And in the way we start is also a tool for your own community, because grounding and bringing in a piece of culture. Um, and the, today we had two, you know, the heart music, and um, and the poem. So this is part of the practice of moving us from distraction to awareness. And that, you know, whenever we can engage in the practices of pivots and also be aware of them and when we're sharing them and helping to create that container of peace, um, that's 
one of the first things that we bring to community. So the next is, um, is there anyone here that hasn't been here before that would like to introduce themselves? Uh, if you could raise your hand. Oh, Wanda, thank you. Hi, I hope you can hear me well. I do not know what's wrong with my microphone. Um, yes, I'm Wanda Guthrie and I'm from uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And uh, I've been so inspired by the workbook and um, I'm part of a Friends Peace team. Um, and we're looking at the workbook and also in our Friends meeting. Um, and so I'm just happy to be here with you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Wanda, for joining us and be, for working in the workbook. So happy to have you here and we could hear you very well. So just letting you know you, your mic works great. Anyone else? Um, uh, Valerie, thank you. Yes, Valerie. <laughs> so this is my first meeting with you all for the community and peace work. I've attended some of the other activist meetings, and um, I was I was just mentioning earlier to Mary that I'm so grateful that you guys are here and that there is positive action we can be taking that moves us closer to this vision of peace. Thank you. Thanks for joining and thanks for the beauty that you brought. Um, is there anything you want to say about what you were playing? Because I, I you kind of told some of us, but, you know, just so that we can be in relationship to the music and, and your intention with it, that would be lovely. Um, so I know people were coming in at different times and so um, what I was playing was a selection of mostly really old music and then a little bit of bits and pieces of contemporary music. And the old pieces came from, uh, actually the last one was called Gruna London. It's a Swedish folk song. And uh, then I started with some very old songs as well from Galicia which was its own kingdom and is now part of Spain, in the north of Spain. Um, some of my Celtic ancestors came from there. There's Bronze Age Celtic villages up there. And the music I was playing was collected about 800 years ago, but is probably much older. And I find that the really old music on the harp has this deeply moving and healing quality. And I, I don't know for sure why that is, but it never fails and it you know, it brings a sense of homecoming. So I was offering it in that spirit of healing and homecoming and taking a moment to breathe. Thank you, thank you. So is there anyone else that's new that wants to introduce themselves? There we go, Juliana. Hello, yes, this is my first time here. I live in Northern California in Sonoma County. And I just came across, there's the Sonoma County Peace and Justice Center, and I get the emails, and they included a blurb about the local peace economy and Code Pink in the workbook, and I followed the threads and ended up here. So I'm really happy to to, to be here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you live in a beautiful peace community. <laughs> So, all right, and is there anyone else that wants to introduce themselves? And is there anyone here that's working on anything that has any questions or concerns on things that have come up since we were last together that we need to address before we move into more tools about community? Uh, Valerie. Um, so Jody just did an interview that just came out in the uh, mountain, or the, sorry, the Highlander Monthly in the December issue. And um, I'll send you guys the link, but it would be another piece of bringing forth this work. So if people want, I can try and put the link in the chat. That would be awesome. And if you put it in the chat, it will also go to everyone okay. um, that's part of the community that couldn't come tonight that, you know, watches the video. So thank you. Okay. I'll give Great. it a shot. All right. Well, um, so just then moving into the, the meat of our time together. Um, right now, you know, as I said earlier, is where we really, really want to be crafting our community with care and with focus. 
And you know, one of the things that I see happening is that commitment in some of our Code Pink locals, where not only you know they've been engaging in activism around Palestine, but now they realize how much stronger, especially that webinar we did about co-ops, where in the building of communities, local peace economy communities, it serves to make us better organizers and activists. And it, it serves to make our actions stronger, more vibrant and more connected in the, and in that way they have more potency. So uh, Code Pink South LA has been doing um, uh, pop-up uh, sharings and pop-up events so that's one of the things they've been doing and they're finding they're growing their community by weaving the two together. And then another one is Code Pink uh, Inland Empire. And they they had gotten really strong doing banner hangs um, and um, on freeways, but now uh, they're actually quite ambitious. They're doing weekly um, food shares where they've been collecting, coming together, and it's getting more and more complicated as it goes in a couple of, uh, at the beginning of next year, I'm going to invite them both in to talk about what they're doing and how it's serving their activism um, and their community. But, you know, we are uh, going to be deep in propaganda, deep in hate, deep in things that are meant to separate. And this is how we serve our community, ourselves, and all of those around us is these this building of community. So I'm so excited that we have Daisy with us today. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Daisy, to start sharing, um, you know, like the, the, the seed, dropping some seeds into the community building. Yes, thank you, Jody. Um, really resonating with what you were um, saying there. Um, going ahead and sharing my screen. Maybe give me a thumbs up, y'all, if you can see my screen here, all right. Looks great, thanks, Daisy. Okay, cool, yeah. Um, but yeah, um, before we kind of really, really get into the meat of things and um, why I'm really excited to be doing this work about like building um, tools, community building tools and, um, you know, pathways for people to actually take um, some of the things that, you know, we've really been trying to implement in our community building and our organizing and really make that a reality where we live. Um, and um, just to kind of give you guys a background of like who I am and um, why this work means so much to me is um, I am, you know, definitely a queer uh, Southern gal, uh, born in New Orleans, grew up here in Kentucky. Um, and there was a moment in time when I thought that I was going to have a lot of things figured out for myself and I didn't. And I was, you know, dro dropping out of college and didn't really have any sense of direction and getting really radicalized by things, but not really having a place or anybody that I could really share that with. And it was turning into less of it turning into action and more of it turning into anger and like resentment um, for people in my community, people that I didn't know. Um, and people that I I hope then later on started to build with, but um, it took a really um, deep, transformative, like dark place for me to figure out that in order for me to address the things that I was seeing happening in my community around police violence, um, I currently live in Louisville now where Breonna Taylor was murdered um, you know, my, my, you know, my safety and trying to figure out ways that I can actually do that, but do that in a way that is peaceful, that's within community. That's where we're like trying to build our alternatives to get ourselves out of this, this stuff that we're living in around capitalism and the war economy. Um, you know, I needed to find community and from there, um, that's how I found organizing. And now I'm here. Um, and so, um, you know, 
what I'll be really working on is to work with you guys on getting these tools and these practices of things that work for me that we um, want to see experiment of what works for you. Um, and yeah. We are gonna be moving through a couple of, a lot of different, <laughs> actually a lot of different building blocks around building community um, and cultivating community and finding community because that is the first step before we could even deepen our organizing and, and deepen our commitments to one another, which is something that Jody's gonna talk about. Um, but, um, you know, uh, there's, there's certain things that we may want to start off to consider. Um, you know, if we are considering, you know, cultivating our own community, enriching or strengthening the communities that we're already a part of, um, you know, or just scratching it off and like building something new um, out of nowhere, you know, something, something fresh that's gonna like feed you and your community's needs. Um, and something that I really wanna talk with, with you guys today is about self communal and historical awareness. Um, and if you have your workbook, um, this is definitely around that concept around self-directed to community engaged, you know, um, there is an internal process to building community. And it's unfortunate that a lot of us start and stick with the self. Um, I like this sort of like conceptual kind of idea that I was trying to go with. Um, around how we can start with the self and then we need to broaden our awareness, you know, start with our self-awareness, but broaden our awareness to our community and actually get clear on, you know, what are the ways that things have been shaped, our current conditions have been shaped by our, our histories and our past and our stories um, and our past lives. Um, how can we bring all that together to build the type of community that we want to be in? And so thinking about a sense of like self-awareness um, and thinking about this concept, you know, we do have to start with ourselves and we need to arrive to ourselves. We need to accept ourselves and we need to root out our privileges and our, our needs and our concerns and our cares and our responsibilities. These are things that make us who we are. They're things that carry out biases that we may carry from the war economy. Um, there are fears, you know, um, there's so many different things that if we don't know that we're not going to be able to communicate that and, and have that accepted by other people. And that means that we need to arrive to ourselves wholly and we need to be honest with that. And so a couple of different questions, you know, to help arrive to the sense of self-awareness, um, when you are cultivating communities, and these are things that, you know, your community should keep you accountable to, and things that you always should reconsider and take a step back to reflect, you know, of like, what are your values, you know, what is actually important to you, what are your needs, what do you have to offer, we don't want to join communities for like our own self indulgence, so, um, you know, we want to start off of like, what do we need and um, how can we start to build reciprocity in that? Community awareness, you know, this kind of goes back to like, we don't want to self-indulge in community. Our communities are not there to just fill our needs. Um, we need to be aware of the communities that we're in, the ones that we want to build. Um, and, you know, I feel like a lot of people, for example, around like the, what's happening in Palestine, you know, this is like their first time becoming aware of what is happening within their community. Um, it's opening them up to like problems and issues that are happening, cultures and ways of life that they didn't even knew existed um, because they were kind of only safe in their bubble, you know, and, um, being enlightened to like different issues that are especially happening on a global level is like, you know, really, really radicalizing. And so, you know, we wanna build a sense of community awareness, like in our own neighborhoods, 
but also considering the, the communities that we're in um, and ones that we want to be a part of, you know, thinking, are we actually in service of to the communities that we say we are? Are we in a larger community? Are we serving ourselves? Um, what are the cultural values of your community? You know, get curious about your community. Um, there's a lot of people that you could connect with. Um, And lastly, historical awareness, you know, um, our current conditions are all influenced and inspired by things that happened to us in the past. And, you know, especially the ways that we heal and grieve and like build communities through those things, which it really makes me think of the poem that we read earlier. Um, you know, how can we turn back to the past? Um, to to find ways to like reconnect with ourselves, um, learn about other ways that people connect with one another. And so this kind of can look like what are struggles that people moved through through the past? How did they move through that together as a community? What are cultural practices that you may notice that have been preserved over time in communities? Um, at the bottom there, if you look at the slides, um, I don't know, I'll maybe, hopefully maybe leave this up for a second, but I don't know, just a little mapping exercise, if you will, of if you wanna do more of a deep dive, do some historical mapping. Um, we have more of a, a contemporary local mapping of like peace economy work um, on our website, but you can do a creative historical version of well, you know, um, and so looking at history, looking at the ways like, oh, you know, how has this impacted me and my community? And so. And so, yeah, um, I think it's time for breakouts. Um, Jody, you're on mute still. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Daisy. Thank you so much. That was great. And, you know, as I said, we're, Daisy's going to keep giving us seeds. There's another dozen of these that she's worked on that really help break down community. And what I was seeing over the last few months is that um, really to have a relationship with community, we have to break it down as much as we kind of broke down the war economy and the peace economy and where the pivots are um, inside of that and where to make it more vibrant and relational. So here's your first one. Uh, so uh, next, uh, Marie will help us break into groups of three. Um, the the questions are, you know, where are you in community right now? And I just here we are. We are in community right now. So we we have this one here. And then you know, where are you in community locally? Would be the next question. Um, is, you know, where are you in community where it is local? And then where do you feel challenged? And also, what would you like guidance on around community strengthening so that um, you could feedback also to Daisy is like, here's where my confusions are, here's where the struggles are, here's what I don't know how to, you know, show up with. Um, so that also Daisy can be really relational in what she's creating and in kind of what order. Uh, so, uh, Marie, I, uh, I'll let you uh, take it away with, um... <laughs> looks like everybody's just coming back. We've got new people joining. <laughs> um, so, um, Adrian, I, I'm actually going to put my email in the chat. If you just want to send it to me, I'll introduce you to Aaron. Um, and um, uh, he can, you know, like we have lots of things that go on there all the time and Monday nights at the People's Forum, we have a huge gathering on Palestine. Uh, we have J20 coming up. So we have a lot going on in New York and a local peace economy and at the UN. So yeah, it's, uh, it's all of it. Um, all right, so is everybody back? Cool. All right, so does anyone have something they want to share, um, especially for Daisy and like any needs that came up? Um, 
Any, 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 even anything that out of what Daisy shared that you came up with some other ideas or questions, prompts, uh, hands up, anybody want to share? Joy. Well, yes, um, the, uh, what I, we were wondering about the, um, other local peace economy code pink meetings, you know, like I know there's one for uh, creatives and, uh, what kind of schedule it, what are there, what are, you know, besides this one, what are the other ones? <laughs> cool. Um, so we have the, the writer, the creatives is a writing workshop right now. Um, and, um, Marie could probably. The next one is December 10th. Um, uh, so next week on Tuesday. And um, I'll put uh, a link to it in the chat. I'm going to be putting some other meetings in the chat in a bit. Um, we'll talk about them. We have um, two more of these meetings scheduled and uh, and a conversation with Jody and Charles Eisenstein coming up. But, um, and so we'll talk about those soon. Cool. All right. Yes, that's, that's the only other one we have besides this gathering, which is really to come together and um, whatever we're doing locally to be able to ask questions and get clarifications and learn more tools together that serve what we're doing locally. Well, um, I think we were talking about um, creativity being a, a, a way to uh, get more connected and real and stuff like that, you know, vague things like that. But I also want to say um, we talked a little bit about how we all found this Code Pink group. And a Pachamama Alliance came up and I was in a Pachamama Alliance Awakening the Dreamer with Charles Eisenstein a couple of <laughs> few years ago. <laughs> that was a while ago. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Yeah, Pachamama. Awesome. I mean, we did Awakening the Dreamer just in 2005 we always do Mother's Day outside the White House in a 24 hour vigil. And so we did at between two and 4 a.m. Awakening the Dreamer from Pachamama outside the White House for uh, Mother's Day uh, when everybody comes and shares in the middle of the night. <laughs> so yes, uh, and Lynn Twist is a dear friend for 40 years. So I, you know, it's the, the peace connective tissues, you know, we, we nourish each other, we stay together. It's like, we're all like, you know, serving a piece, enriching the whole, uh, it's a beautiful community. I mean, I think that's what keeps, for me, sane, uh, is that there is this huge community. And, you know, what we hope to be doing here is like helping, like it's the, you know, the connective tissue, the mycelium, uh, the helping the mushrooms, like be more like out there and attracting more people. Um, so, uh, which, you know, thanks to Valerie for writing that awesome piece. Um, uh, that's a really good educational piece, Valerie. Did you want to share something from your breakout? I'm so glad you like the piece, Jody. <laughs> I haven't read it yet. I haven't seen it in print, but I bet, I bet you know, it's in one piece. The editor is usually really respectful of of these articles. Um, God, yeah, no, I was gonna say, so brain dump. Four Bs, you guys have all heard of that, right? Four Bs, the Four B movement. Um, but I have, but I think everybody probably needs a little- uh, A uh, little mini moment. Um, yeah. In in one of the Koreas, either North or South, and I'm apologizing because I don't have the- South. South Korea, okay. So the, the young women were pretty upset at how politics were going, much as many young women are here and older women and, you know, many people. And so, in the Korean language, the four Bs, there's four different words that start each with a B, and they basically mean things like no dating, no sex, no marriage, no babies. And it's a strike against what they see as overarching, overbearing, dangerous patriarchy. That's been adopted by American women since the election results were first coming out. And, but, so that, I get that, I really get that, I respect it. Um, but what concerns me is that there are people that are purported to be on the left and they're being very vitriolic and vicious 
against people who voted for Trump. And I'm hearing a lot of Trump people say, I was sucker punched. I didn't know what, what this was. I made a mistake. And we shouldn't be attacking these people. We should be like welcoming them in to sit with us and say, how can we strategize so that we can turn all of this around? But I can't, no, I can't get through to Zionists and I can't get through to rabid lefties either. It's like I watch their eyes glaze over and I can't reach them and I don't know how to solve that. So Valerie, that's that's a good. So first of all, shoulds um, are what keep us separated. So it's 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 the it's really what 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 can you do? And I think that's what this work is about. It's how do you focus on what you can do? And that is to model peace. I mean, the peace economy, you know, as we started out, as we listen to your harp, as we be present and ground, what these communities are meant to do is model peace. We, you know, at Goofing Go, always like, the, you know, the reason we started this campaign was that we realized we can't end war until we end the war economy. But that doesn't mean engaging with the war economy. It means cultivating something else so that the, you know, the war, it will fall apart. Hate fall, the one thing in history that we've learned is hate does not survive. You know, that at, at some point it doesn't create anything. It doesn't nurture life. And that wake up happens. And the funny thing that you should bring up the South Korean women on the day after the, you know, the, the leader of South, of South Korea decided to do martial law and in like eight hours was shut down. So just a reminder of like, when you come together with a powerful, like, we're going to do this together, it's not against someone. It's like, this is how we take care of ourselves. This is how we stand beautifully. This is how, you know, where the love is here and not to be shared when violence is happening. It wasn't making other people wrong. It was taking, you know, responsibility and, and modeling. And in that way, it shifts the entire culture. Now, it's way more complex than that. You know, I, I would say whatever's happening in South Korea, it's not really like people motivated. It's definitely happening in the elitists. But um, let's, you know, it's like the start is not calling, not defining people, but defining what we are going to do, kind of like the bees. It's like be the bees. Um, and then it's the being of love, the being of care, the being of creating community that um, starts to create, I call it the, um, the vibration. I, I say that we all become tuning forks for peace in doing this work. Because when we are engaged out there, it's using us and it's distorting our field. If we stay in the building, what, what we've done not enough of in the in the allowing the separation, in allowing the division, in is is to get engaged where it's not ours. So where it is ours is our community, is what we can build, is how we model what peace and beauty look like. Because, you know, like you said, it's like you it it, it it's it's the bank shot that changes people. And it's always, um, I call it apple pie. Um, and I have, you know, used in, in this meeting so many examples of what apple pie looks like. But really, like in the home sweet home, we're baking apple pie on the table that um, Daisy laid for us earlier today in the poem. And that's where, because otherwise it's using your attention, it's using your heart, it's taking you where you actually can't affect. And where you can affect is in building the beautiful, building the connective tissue. And we just haven't done enough of that. And the whole war economy, peace economy thing is to take ourselves off the, off the war economy, to take ourselves off the plate that uses us, disturbs us, disturbs our energy field. And when, and I say, whenever that's happening, you know, you pick up your bookmark and you just start practicing a pivot. And you start practicing as a pivot because the practice of pivot means you need someone else. So it's like the pivots are practiced in community themselves anyway. And it's like that's where the nourishment is, the building is, the soil is created. And it's it's hard to like because we're so used 
to being in the frenetic and the I can fix, I can do, it's mine, um, which is in itself empire war economy thinking. Um, because the, you know, where we actually have value and contribution is locally in our communities. And um, so, uh, you know, uh, yeah, the Liz Estrada is a great practice, you know, and and it's like whatever gets, whatever happens locally, whatever arises out of what is locally, those things get picked up. I mean, look at Liz Estrada, get picked up across the world. So it's like when something has energy in the building of love and the building of connective tissue, it tends to, you know, be picked up and shared and, um, <laughs> oh, Joy, you're going to write a poem for each pivot. I love you. I love you. Thank you. <laughs> Yay, culture. It's all about culture. And like the last, I, I Joy, I hope you were here last time, um, which was all about culture. Um, so, you know, maybe um, I, I should, uh, I could have you um, sharing with Cameron to come up with some more things we could do and maybe even another uh, a collective of the culture workers. Um, so, you know, we, uh, that would be great. Um, we have a Next week, we have a webinar uh, with a collective of the culture workers, the artists uh, against apartheid um, on our Netflix um, webinar, which is really a local um, engagement. And also it's about storytelling. And why are we doing this? It's because storytelling is core to who we are as humans. And it's like book burning. When Netflix owns the library of storytelling, um, and they won't allow a story. It's a book burning. And we we need to look at these things for what they are. And um, so I'm I'm sorry that this this hour always goes so fast. <laughs> um, so yeah, well, you know, next time um, we have a, a really um, beautiful offering that Maria will be hosting about grief because, you know, that's so much of what's happening now with where we are, with what continues to happen. And also it tends to come up around the holidays. So I'm gonna let Marie tell us what's coming up next. My deepest gratitude for all of you for nurturing peace in all the ways that you do and cultivating your community. And I'll look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks and off to Marie. Thank you, Jody. Thank you. Hi everyone. So as we close out, um, I spent my day today putting uh, events up on the website. So <laughs> these were all on my mind and I wanted to let you know what's coming up. So the writing workshop, uh, the next one is on December 10th. And that is a, people have been gathering for a couple of months. Even people who have not gathered before are welcome to come. And they ask you to bring a poem or a little bit of writing to share with the group. Um, and I haven't yet been able to make one of them, but um, everybody says it's a really beautiful, intimate space. And so I'd welcome, you know, you'd be welcome to come and join and you can RSVP on the website. Uh, next Friday, um, like we mentioned earlier, Charles Eisenstein and Jody are going to have a conversation on um, unlearning some of the cultural conditioning that is preventing us from being engaged in our communities and uh, preventing us from being engaged uh, uh, even with ourselves. Um, Charles has this statement like, don't should on me. And so it's like really seeing where you have all of this judgment about yourself and the shoulds in your life and trying to uh, do some simple things to unlearn um, that, uh, that impulse and habit that we all have, everybody has it. Um, because it is directly related to war economy tactics and ideas about how change happens. Um, it's going to be a great conversation, I know. Um, the next local peace economy gathering two weeks from today on December 18th, like um, Jody said, is going to be on grief. My uh, friend and Jody's friend, Aaron Dunford, um, who is uh, a well-known uh, space facilitator. She works um, on the Emergence Network with Bio Kumalafe. And a lot of her work recently has been holding um, sp deep spaces online and in person around collective grief and sharing of grief. And if every email, pretty much every email I've gotten since I've started uh, working, I've been here a month, 
um, has been somebody um, wanting to talk about, uh, at least mentioning how they're really grieving this time right now. And um, and so we felt like it was a really important topic um, so that people could come together and really um, see how uh, to, how, how to metabolize and compost grief so that you can then move into effectiveness. Because when, sometimes I think when we're holding a lot of grief, we feel like we can't step forward. Um, and Aaron has a lot of, um, a lot of thinking about that, but of course, like, you know, the 15 or 20 minutes she'll have to speak is really short, but we'll do our best in that, um, in that time at the next meeting. And then the meeting after that is on January 1st. We really debated about whether we were going to hold a meeting on January 1st, but ultimately we decided to have one around uh, the tradition of having New Year's resolutions, and we're calling them New Year's commitments, and how you might kind of level up your New Year's commitments um, for 2025. So um, we we hope that you'll join us for one or all of those gatherings and you can, I put the links in the chat and you can RSVP to them there. And then that way you get the link mailed to you the day of um, of the meeting. We don't share the links publicly until those RSVPs are in. So if you could uh, RSVP, that would be great. So um, I just wanted to thank Valerie again for the heart playing at the beginning. And it, I know it, it really brought my nervous system down about four notches and um, I, I want to go and listen to some on, on my stereo now. <laughs> Thank you, Valerie, again for that. It was really beautiful. And, um, you know, I've kept you a little bit over time. So I wanted to say thank you, and I hope you have a great evening. If you would like links, I have a YouTube channel. That would be great. Will you put it in the chat or email it if to you, me? Uh, if we're going to close out, I'll email you a couple links. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you.